China proper, PBOC, is buying gold uh, ostensibly to secure and make more solid their currency as an alternative to the dollar moving forward. So silver sits in the middle. What was the most hated metal in the world because, well, it's not quite precious, it's not quite base, is now the best of both worlds. So what does that mean to this picture? That credit impulse, not even measuring that credit impulse in a, in a pro rata fashion. The last time we had a credit impulse this steep, not at that magnitude, silver rallied $6. So I'm going to say to you that silver can go to $40 uh, without anything else happening right now. Vince Lancy, a respected commodities trader and market strategist, has recently highlighted the potential for silver to experience a significant breakout in the coming year. Lancy's analysis and current market trends indicate that silver is set for a significant breakout, potentially reaching $40 within the next year. He notes that during the last major credit impulse, silver gained $6, suggesting a similar rise could occur now, particularly with China's ongoing fiscal stimulus driving demand. This aligns with broader market fundamentals, which show silver's price already climbing by over 30% this year, driven by strong industrial demand and supply shortages. A 215 million ounce supply demand deficit, combined with increased precious metals holdings by Russia and growing silver demand from China and India, further underscores the bullish outlook. Moreover, the Federal Reserve's interest rate cuts have made precious metals more attractive as investments. This has supported silver's current price of around $32 and its potential to rise to $38.14 by the end of 2024, with $40 becoming a realistic target next year. Interestingly, Lancy has noted that silver has recently outperformed gold, rising 8.63% over the past month, compared to gold's 3.75% gain. While gold has been the top-performing asset class globally, according to Michael Hartnett of Bank of America, silver is now surpassing it in terms of performance. Despite gold setting multiple record highs this year and drawing significant attention, its sister metal, silver, has also been on a strong upward trajectory, outpacing gold in recent months. Gold has captured the spotlight with its impressive performance relative to a red-hot stock market, but silver has quietly followed suit, with a 29% rise year-to-date, matching gold's percentage gains. Many analysts, including those at UBS, suggest that silver's rally may just be getting started. It Before we begin this video, please remember to subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon for notifications, and share it with anyone who might find it helpful. This is the gold chart for the last month. Silver is the white line chart laid over top of it. Silver is up 8.63% in the last month, and gold is up 3.75%. So in the last month, silver has eclipsed gold, which was the highest performing asset uh, class uh, on the planet, as far as Michael Hartnett's concerned. And now that would mean silver is. So all right, why can silver continue rallying? Other than, we all know the technical story. Uh, there are several technical stories. We have a structure that we just broke out of. Uh, we have a channel uh, that we're in going up in gold. And we have momentum on our side, courtesy of uh, the analysis by Michael Oliver. I'm going to give you the monetary situation that's going to give you understanding why it's going to continue happening. There are two reasons why silver and gold and oil and everything else that's not interest rate based can continue higher. But silver up 6.4% on Friday is the one leading the pack now. All right. There are two reasons. And those two reasons are the previously mentioned tsunami posts. China and the US simultaneously have open their purse strings. Silver is the best metal in China, aside from the fact that they have a history with silver. Unfinished business is what I call it. China loves base metals when they have a fiscal impulse because you know they were builders. They were builders of roads and, 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 and buildings. And so that's why you would buy oil, you'd buy steel, you'd buy iron, you'd buy rebar, you'd buy copper. And China proper, PBOC, is buying gold uh, ostensibly to secure and make more solid their currency as an alternative to the dollar moving forward. So silver sits in the middle. What was the most hated metal in the world because, well, 
it's not quite precious, it's not quite base, is now, what does that mean to this picture? That credit impulse, not even measuring that credit impulse in a, in a pro rata fashion, the last time we had a credit impulse this steep, not at that magnitude, silver rallied $6. So I'm going to say to you that silver can go to $40 uh, without anything else happening right now. That's it. What would gold go to? Well, what did gold go to when went from March 1st uh, to to uh, to uh, May 1st? It's got like three, $400 in it. Okay, so that's the Chinese tsunami. That's the China money coming in, right? Unless it falters, uh, that's what's going to happen. Vince Lancey discusses the anticipated dollar crush, predicting that its effects will soon become more prominent as the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates. He forecasts a 50 basis point reduction before the election, followed by a potential additional 25 basis point cut. This aligns with the Fed's recent announcement of a 50 basis point interest rate cut, the first in four years, marking a significant policy move ahead of the presidential election on November 5th. This rate cut reflects ongoing inflation concerns and aims to bolster economic growth while stabilizing the labor market. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell has indicated that inflation is approaching the 2% target, and the labor market is less tight than in 2019. Additionally, strategists anticipate two more rate cuts in 2024. Such monetary easing may contribute to a decline in the dollar and increased interest in precious metals like gold and silver. Let's get back to the video. The second part, the dollar crush. The dollar crush is going to be easier uh, for us to see because we're living it and feeling it. The Fed, due to political pressure, I believe, cut rates prior to the election to get it out of the way before the actual election itself. They cut rates 50 basis points. They'll cut another 25 basis points, most likely. In doing that, they reduce their interest expense to more manageable levels. The interest they're paying uh, on their debt decreases. The Fed began to knock real interest rates down, which is bullish for stocks, bullish for gold, bullish for silver, and bearish for long-term bonds. And what has happened since, I'll put this chart, you can look at this chart while I'm talking about this. Since the Fed lowered 50 basis points, short-term rates dropped. So your money market dropped 50 basis points, and a lot of people took their money out of that and put it into 90-day T-bills. But nobody bought long-term bonds. They sold long-term bonds. Some people put their money in gold. Some people put their money in silver. Some people put their money in stocks. They're putting their money in things that will do much better compared to uh, interest rate sensitive assets. As the Fed lowers interest rates at the short end, they've essentially given up the fight, thrown in the towel on fighting inflation in the short on the short side. There are two ways you can fight inflation. You can fight inflation by raising short-term rates and strangling money so people can't borrow enough to do what they have to do. Or you can let long-term rates rise to fight inflation. Now, the long-term rate rising thing is a lot slower and a lot longer to do, and it brings with it a lot of pain, like gold rallying to $3,000, like silver rallying to $50. That manifests here. The, the red line is Fed funds. The blue line is real interest rates. Real interest rates are 1.5%. So even though inflation, even though prices are high, right, they're not coming down, their rate of increase has slowed to the point where you're actually, if you're still working, you're getting paid more than the rate is going up, uh, of inflation is going up. So you're actually saving a little real money. Our savings are the government's losses. If we save, they lose. The Fed needs to get that rate down to zero and negative, preferably. See that? That's where they want it to be. They want it to be down there at about zero. There's only one way to protect yourself if you do that. Only one way, and that's to buy assets that are denominated in dollars. And the assets that are denominated in dollars are stocks, not interest rate bearing assets, commodities, and stuff. But let's start with let's start with stocks. You're going to take your money out of bonds. You're going to take your money out of cash because cash is trash. Cash is going to become trash, and people are going to put their money into 90 day T bills. 
That's what they're doing now. And then they're going to say, oh, they're going to lower rates again, or rates are going to start to, inflation is going to stabilize at 3%, and rates are going to keep coming down. The Federal Reserve's recent actions and anticipated policy moves mark a crucial turning point for gold and silver markets. The announced interest rate cuts and the potential return to quantitative easing may boost demand for these precious metals as investors seek safety from inflation and economic uncertainty. The interplay between these policies and market dynamics suggests that gold and silver could experience significant price movements, potentially leading to new highs. How do you see the market evolving? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this discussion on gold and silver insightful, please like this video and subscribe for more updates. Thank you for joining us today.